So this began as a novel, and it never got much beyond chapter six. Uh, so I thought I'd read you the first six chapters, if you don't mind. <laughs> chapter one. Saturday was Sam's first day at hockey. The notice said he had to wear complete equipment. Now Sam, I should tell you, for those folks who are still wondering what they're doing here tonight, <laughs> we, we got Dave who runs the Vinyl Cafe, the world's smallest record store. Morley is his wife, Morley. And they got two kids, Sam and Stephanie. Sam's, Sam was seven years old when this happened, in the fall two years ago. The, the, the note came back, he was going to play hockey for the first time. The notice said he had to wear complete equipment and Morley had been accumulating things for the better part of a year. And on the Wednesday night before that first game, she, she laid all those things out on the kitchen table. The blue pants looked too large for her son. She had rescued them from her nephew Scott. One of the thigh pads was, was missing, but she thought she could cut one out of cardboard and make do. So she looked at her list and she ticked off pants. The skates she figured would hold up for another year, she ticked off skates, and then she ticked off elbow pads. She, she'd bought them from the lady across the street. The shin guards had come from a church sale. Uh, the kids had worn them on their shoulders for two years for playing dress up. They used to wear the shin pads on their shoulders and hit each other with hockey sticks. <laughs> Sally said that she thought she had a helmet that would fit Sam and had promised to bring it to the rink, so Morley ticked off shin guards and she put a question mark beside the helmet and she stuffed everything into two plastic bags and propped them by the door and she went upstairs. This is a father's job, she thought to herself as they drove to the rink the next morning, but Bruce had phoned in sick, so Dave, her husband, had gone to open the record store. And Sam was alone in the back seat of the car holding on to his stick and they weren't talking. They'd had a fight after breakfast because Sam wanted to get dressed at home, and the only thing that he had said in the last 30 minutes was that they were going to be late. The second time he said it, Morley told him to get in the car. And now she was regretting yelling. She was feeling bad about speaking to him like that. What, why did they have to fight before his first game of hockey? Is this what he was going to remember? In the dressing room, Sam slumped on the bench, and Morley stared at the two bags, because for the first time in her life, she had no idea how to dress her own son. She didn't know where to begin. The man beside her was lacing his boy into a set of shoulder pads, and they didn't have the shoulder pads because the list said the shoulder pads were optional. Well, we don't have those, said Sam. Accusingly, we don't have to, Morley said. You don't have to have the shoulder pads. And then she started with the pants, and then she was stumped. Do the shin pads, said the man beside her, and then put the socks over. Sam was the last kid on the ice. Chapter 2. <laughs> On Thursday after school, Sam said he needed a jock strap. What for, said Morley. <laughs> she was frying sausages and reading a gardening magazine. Everyone has one, I have to. Who has one, she said. Paul, he wore it to school. <laughs> it's a penis protector. <laughs> Morley phoned Paul's mother after supper. Chapter 3. Friday morning, Morley drove to Canadian Tire, and when she got there, she sat in the parking lot because she wasn't sure what to ask for. She knew penis protector couldn't be right, <laughs> but, but she wasn't sure about jockstrap. She, she didn't know if that was a word you could use in a Canadian Tire store. <laughs> it might be a little boy word, like fart. <laughs> she, she certainly wasn't about to say penis to a man that she didn't know. So she drove home instead of going in the store and <laughs> phoned Dave. She said, Sam needs a jock strap for hockey, and that's your job. <laughs> Chapter 4. <laughs> Saturday morning, Morley took Stephanie to get her hair cut. Dave took Sam to the hockey game. How was the jock? asked Morley at supper time. It didn't fit, said Sam. He, he was pointing at his father as if he was a witness in a murder trial. <laughs> he, he didn't get the holder. <laughs> Chapter 5. 
Morley opened her son's equipment bag on Wednesday night and she fished out the jock strap. It looked just like those masks that painters wear on their faces when they're sanding drywall. It was a size medium. She phoned Paul's mother again. That's, that's just the cup, Maggie explained. There's a holder it slips into, kind of like a, a garter belt. How could Dave watch all the hockey he watched and not get the holder? The way he hollered during those hockey games, you'd think at least he'd had a rudimentary knowledge of the equipment. Huh? How could he sit in front of the television set so full of opinions and come home with a cup and no cup holder? <laughs> Morley felt resentment well up in her as she thought of the Saturday nights that she had struggled to get the kids into bed while Dave sank into the couch in front of the television set. If he hadn't learned anything, what was the point? <laughs> Chapter 6. Morley went back to Canadian Tire on Thursday night, and as she passed through the automatic door, she realized that she still didn't know what the holder was called. She had looked over the equipment list again before she had left home. Jock strap definitely wasn't on it. She had had a tick beside everything on the list, except for the shoulder pads, and she had double-checked there. Shoulder pads were optional. There were four aisles of hockey equipment. She had to go buy them twice before, before she spotted what she was looking for. They came in three sizes, medium, large, and extra large. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, all things considered, she was surprised to see how small the extra large one was. <laughs> the package came with a cup identical to the one David bought, plus the elastic belt he had neglected. Morley was holding the medium, the smallest one, in her hand when she saw the salesman coming, and this was what she was hoping to avoid. For your husband, he asked. <laughs> My son, said Morley. How old is he? Thank God, thought Morley. She thought he was going to ask how big it was. <laughs> he's, he's seven, she said. Seven years old. That one's too big, said the young man, taking the package from her. You'll need extra, extra small. We're out. And try, try, try maybe Eaton's. Morley was smiling when she got back to the car. Athletic support, it said in big white letters on the red package. It was on her list after all. She had ticked it off. Morley thought that she was the athletic support. <laughs> She got the jock at the bay, she went up there, she got an extra, extra small athletic support for a seven-year-old boy. He's, he's playing hockey, she said nonchalantly. And then she told him a lie. It's his second year. <laughs> she she didn't, had no idea why she lied about it being his second year. Just something she did. Sam put it on as soon as she got home, over his pants. <laughs> then before she could stop him, he ran across the street to show Alan. Well, why not, thought Morley. She watched them from the window, Sam standing proudly on the front lawn. He looks like a ballet dancer, she thought. <laughs> then Alan kicking him between the legs. <laughs> Her son laughing. <laughs> Said, do it again. <laughs> he wore the jock to bed that night <laughs> and to school the next day under his jeans. Morley was going to say no, and then she thought, why not? For a week, she kept finding it all over the house, on the stairs, on the couch in the TV room, slung over his chair in the kitchen. She felt no compunction to put it away. She was as pleased with it as he was. Thank you.